your UK tour just you you just did now in September. You opted not to go to bigger venues, but to stay in the same venues that that you played in before. Mm. So why was this? What does that tie in with what you just mentioned? Yeah, it was sort of like going back and doing it for the fans, and mm. tickets were cheap, and it was like a good way to go out and something we'd always wanted to do. We wanted to go back to those venues, and we didn't really have a reason to yet. And then just yet yeah, support the local. We wanted to go to the towers that don't have venues, so. Mm. We went to all those B-side places that don't have like thousand cat venues, and we've got right in there. That's good. What what were those gigs like? Did it bring back memories? Yeah, I think it was really humbling, and mm. it was important for us. I think because we that's where we started, sure. and it had been a long time since we'd experienced that because we'd been playing these big, big venues, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, it kind of just reminded us why we started doing this in the first place mm -hmm. and how it felt back then and like how we've come on. I just think all round it was a really good thing to do. It was hard, but it was good. Mm -hmm. Hard in what way? Hard, it was really hard on our crew. Okay. <laughs> the kids like okay. all the loaded, like loadings sure. up, up like sets of stairs and it was hard because it was, it was long and it was like pretty much all back to back and like we were just, we just got really ill because we were just our live show just like fucked us up quite mm. a lot. <laughs> but is this the rawness of the of the, of the of the live show? Is that part of the honesty of what, what you just mentioned? Does it have to be that way yeah. for you? No, yeah, it's hard. Yeah, I think we just go out and we play how we're feeling. So we just. I wouldn't want it to be too polished. I like the fact that it can stop and start. When you get a band or an artist that's like super pop, everything has to fit in time like with a click track or something, and it's just not honest. Like it's just, mm. it's really important to me that we're just like live and real. Do you think this is just something I wrote down? That um, do you think that maybe popular music in a way has doesn't have an edge anymore? That it, yeah, no, I think it did a few years ago. I think there was some cool stuff coming out, and now, past two years or so, it really does feel like it's just all the same. The edge is definitely <laughs> lost. <laughs> <That's> noise. <laughs> yeah, we'll hear a little bit of the sound checking, but that's unavoidable, I suppose. Um, well, there's one more thing about. Uh, about your know, well, live shows and, and then going through that process and that it is, is exhausting is that I read that um, you broke your elbow or a wrist yeah. and, and you had a shoulder um, injury? Yeah, both my shoulders okay. are gone. So how does that factor in every, into everything then? Did, did it change the way you approach music now and the way you approach Take Control? It definitely meant that we wrote a few slow songs because there was I was practicing with a broken wrist and I didn't realise it was broken mm. and I couldn't move it very fast. I wasn't able to play fast, so we wrote Angelica and uh, it, we wrote. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't. I just had surgery on my shoulder, so sure. I couldn't beat the shit out of the drums. So there's a few more slower songs or mid-paced songs on the album because of that. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's cool. We adapted. Was that a welcome addition, those slow songs for the live set? Yeah, I like it. I, I think dynamic's really important. I like mm. to make people sort of go on a journey up and down. You know? Definitely. It makes, the, it makes the harsher songs more harsh. And uh, I don't know, it's good for us as well because you're usually getting really, really tired and then you can have a nice rest and do <laughs> a slow song. Fair enough. Then, uh, well, obviously I have, to, I have to talk about the BC Boys and, and Mike B. How much of a fan were both of the both of you of the BC Boys? Big fan, Growing just f like through my whole life. Okay. Yeah. Huge. What is it about their music then that that's struck you? It's just no, there's no one else like Beastie Boys. Mm -hmm. They just had it. They were just so cool. They had their own style and they did their own thing, and it kind of like inspired everything that we do. Okay. Like every artist that came before us. They're pioneers that were like way before their time, so. I don't know anyone that doesn't like Beastie Boys. Mm. I can't, there's no reason why you couldn't. 
maybe maybe a particular track or album that that inspires you? Sabotage for one, mm-hmm. just like a rock song, like punk rock song, with just like rapping over it is just mm-hmm. sick. That bass line, insane. So what was it like then? That Mike D called you. Well, did, 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 obviously, you couldn't expect something like that. So, so what was it like? Yeah, really surreal. It's really like it was sort of way and beyond what we ever expected to happen with our second record. Like, it's such a phenomenal jump from being completely unknown to like working with a Beastie Boy in two years. So mm-hmm. it was just it was like a big adventure, and we just really enjoyed it. It was like it was like going on holiday or something. Yeah, it was a special time. How did it fit in the timeline? Did, were you already working on the on the second album? Yeah, we uh, had well, we had all the songs pretty much written, okay. apart from a few. We were gonna go record it, and then he was just like, "Yeah, we got in touch," and he decided that he wanted to be involved. So mm-hmm. we worked it out with him. But if that phone call hadn't have happened, we might have recorded it with someone else, I guess. Okay. But it wasn't that that he did. He have a lot of influence on on how the tracks uh, kind of came together, but only or only on the production side. No, yeah, he did. He made us go through them okay. all again and like do pre-production where we sort of sat there and restructured songs. Like there's a few songs where he made us add bits in or said this bit's not good enough, or mm-hmm. which was cool because we've never really done that before. So it meant that it feels like there was more depth to our music because we really sort of worked at the structure and the quality of the songs and obviously he's been around the music industry for a long time is there anything he told you or any tips or or something you took away from working with him i mean not really tips as such but just his attitude just his attitude and just what laurie said about because quite often we'll write songs it'll just be like verse chorus verse chorus finish you'd be like that's done but like, yeah, he definitely taught us that you can, there's always room for more. Is there maybe a specific track that, that uh, comes to mind uh, when we talk about this? Or the track that kind of changed when he came, came ar- around? Play Dead. Okay. They, that song was like a lot more simple and there wasn't as many lyrics and it was just pretty straight up. And now it, we put in a lot of like stops and extra notes and more chor- choruses and stuff and yeah, and consume. Like mm-hmm. could consume or be consumed was like that was written off. We weren't going to put it on the album because okay. it was wasn't finished. But I don't know. It was his idea to like bring more to it, wasn't it? Yeah. And called Lloyd and just said, "This we need to do more with this track." What was the idea, because uh, Mike D is on that track as well, what was the initial spark for that track? Laurie, Laurie just kept playing that bass line, that do, 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 in sound checks, and it was just wicked. And we kind of like, when we were in the States, we were just like playing a little bit. And I used to rap, I used to mm. rap quite a lot, that's what I first started doing. Okay. And. Uh, I had just some old lyrics, like some old bars that I just, I was rapping over it and it sounded really good. And then Laurie had the idea for consume or be consumed, like those words have been rolling around for a while. Mm. And then we just put it all together and it was great. And then Mike D did his bit and it was icing on the cake. This is interesting what you mentioned about rapping. Can you see yourself incorporating more of a rap style to the, to the music that you make? Yeah, I think there already is though to some extent. Sure. Yeah, I think we always did. Like when I think about Ceasefire, like one of our first ever songs that we wrote, it's like packet of fags and a dirty magazine, stereo mm-hmm. night special at the television screen. Like if you just change the music behind it, it would be rap. It's kind of like if you were to put a hip hop beat over a lot of our songs, mm-hmm. the, the lyrics would still roll over it like a like a hip hop song. Sure. In that sense, would you ever do a more of a hip hip hop yeah. type beat or tune? Definitely. When it feels right and when okay. it feels like people want it, we've got stuff as well that we've worked on and stuff that's like not finished. But yeah, yeah, I can imagine us doing like a full hip hop album. Okay. Like, I think it'd be fun. And and well, you you mentioned that you rap before, so can I assume then that that hip hop 
aside from punk, and, and it was also a big influence for bo for the both of you growing Massively, up. Massively, yeah, mm. maybe even more so than punk. Okay. Like, yeah, I've always been hugely into hip hop. So finally, then, w when did it, when when did those two influences kind of start to melt? Was it with the BC Boys that, because they have kind of? Yeah, mine was kind of with Eminem. Okay. A lot of his beats would have like guitars on. Sure. Like songs like The Way I Am and stuff like really were heavy. They sort of felt like and sing for the moment. And there's a lot of like guitar led and then he had like solos and stuff. And that's when I first started noticing how you could like... How you could mix. Because when you're younger, you don't think that you can mix like that. You think you should mm. be one or the other. But then there's bands like Rage Against the Machine. Sure. Yeah, bang on. And just like, they just like, what is that? <laughs> sure. Finally, then you already uh, kind of touched upon it, but uh, did, well, second album in two years, part of a, a two-part series. What are your plans for the third? Are you already thinking about doing it as quickly as this? Not, not maybe not as quickly. I'm not sure, but we've already started writing for it. Okay. We've got lots of ideas. Okay. okay. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you.